Greetings, Facebook. Greetings, YouTube. Um, I say Facebook because some of our friends from Facebook, I'm sure, are going to uh, watch this video. But uh, this is another Back to Eaton broadcast, another Back to Eaton exclusive. I am Julius Reinhardt, and this is my wife, Clarissa, the lovely, lovely Clarissa <laughs> Reinhardt. Uh, we're back uh, once again. Of course, praise God by way of the worship center where the pastor is Apostle Dan Bowling. And the first lady is Pastor Karen Bowling. Amen. Amen. So, you know, much love, much love, much love uh, for them gracing us and allowing us to use the studio. Um, today we have an interesting topic uh, that we want to bring to everybody. Isn't that right, baby? Yes, it is. We wanted to talk about uh, the difference between isolation and solitude. Isolation, the differences between isolation and solitude. I wanted to say this really quick, then I'm going to turn it over to my wife. Now, I want to say, to set this out up foundationally, that <clears throat> in theory, and even if you look in some, uh, you, you have to understand what we're saying. I'll say it like this. You have to understand what we're saying and what we're presenting in the overall context and in, in the detail we're presenting it in. So I wanted to preface it with that. You have to understand it in the detail and the context that we're dealing with it in. There is a difference uh, in, in, this, in the context we're presenting it in between isolation and solitude. And because solitude is something, I'm gonna start it off by saying this, solitude is something that can happen be a choice. So, go ahead, baby. Well, first you gotta praise in. Ooh, y'all forgive me. Y'all forgive me. It's okay. Y'all forgive me. Yeah, she's she's had she has seen, she didn't have mercy on me. So y'all gotta have mercy <laughs> on me. Okay. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for another day. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for who we are in you. Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to come together one more time and to to share and to and to just uh, just to sh share and speak your word and and to um, you know minister to whoever whoever has ears to hear and Lord we ask you Lord to bless those that are listening uh, bless those uh, that that watch and uh, Lord I'm asking Lord to open the, their ears someone that may be watching even that just may be going through a situation that may not know you at all. Lord, uh, bless there to be some, bless there to be something to be said, rather, Lord, that will um, open their ears up and that will be a seed planted. Uh, someone that may find themselves in bondage, that saved, that love you, but has bought into a specific lie. Lord, Lord, I, we're asking you, Lord, to break those chains in the name of Jesus and for them to be set free. And Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, as my husband stated, the topic is the difference between isolation and solitude. I'm going to give some definitions. Um, I'm also going to give some examples as well. And just to say this much, this topic uh, came to me last night and I was praying and then I told my husband about it. I was like, hey, what about this? And he was like, let's do it. And so... Um, one of the biggest things is that we are definitely in a time where uh, we're getting close to the holidays, you know, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and it's normally a time where you find a lot of people who are depressed. Um, I think it's called SAD, seasonal, something about some seasonal anxiety disorder, something like that. Some people experience that, but let's kind of Let's kind of take it right now before the holidays. One of the other things that I know a lot of people are dealing with is the thing with COVID. So some people minds are under attack. Um, they have thrown themselves into isolation, saying that it's solitude with God, and it's not. So today, we're going to tackle the difference between them both. Mm -hmm. And I am a product of what I talk about because I'm an example of 
something that happened dealing with isolation that led me to suicide. So isolation, um, the definition, the state of being alone or away from others. Solitude, the state of being alone without being lonely. Example of isolation. Isolation is a prisoner in solitary confinement, which is bondage. I'm going to say that again. An example of isolation is a prisoner in solitary confinement, which is bondage. That's right. And just to elaborate on that, when someone is behind, as we know, someone's behind bars and everything, <clears throat> even in prison, I want somebody to hear me. Somebody needs to hear this. Um, even in prison, um, the prison system recognizes uh, the kind of beings we are. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not only spiritual beings. We're not only spiritual beings. Uh, we're we're spiritual beings, and we're also social mm -hmm. beings That's we correct. we we need fellowship with humans we need we need to interact with community you, you see what i'm saying even when god created adam and he, adam you know and god god had god adam had god i want y'all to hear me now adam had god after everything was done adam had god he had he had, before he had before that he had the animals but at the apex, I'm not putting the animal before God. God forbid, I'm not doing that. But I'm just saying, he had the animals. But at the apex, at the heart of it, he had God. Mm -hmm. But God said, even though he had God, he said, it's not good that man should be alone. It's like, well, wait a minute. But he had God. Mm -hmm. Because, mm, again, good. again, we are social beings. If we weren't just spiritual beings, then he, it would have been all right. But there are ways, especially in what God had in mind for Adam when he created Eve, there are ways that a human interacts with another human mm -hmm. that somebody's not going to want to hear this, but this is just the truth, that you're not going to get from God. Exactly. per se because God is not God is ultimately God is, is 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 the most unique being in the entire cosmos universe period you know what I'm saying and so he's not he's the, some scholars would say he's altogether other that's another way they, they describe God but we are social beings we need we need uh, uh, beings like us that we interact with as, as well. Now, there are also, of course, things that we can get from each other, but there are, there's a part of us that won't get satisfied in any other way other than from mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I say what I'm saying, I, I don't want people to take it the wrong way. I'm not saying that that God is incapable of doing any, I'm saying that there's, there's a way he made us. That's all I'm trying to say. There's a way he made us, and we are, he made us to interact with each other. Make a long story short. And so they tap into that. They tap into our natural uh, way of being in, in, in prison and, or in jail or whatever. And when people act out of order in, in, in prison, they put them in a form of bondage. And what is that bondage, baby? Solitary, solitary confinement, confinement mm -hmm. which is which is a form of isolation even though it has the term solitary in it mm -hmm. uh, yeah tr true enough we could tick we could really play with the topic and say you know we could we really could in a sense but I believe hopefully in the context you all get what we're saying mm -hmm. we could say healthy solitude versus unhealthy solitude mm -hmm. but 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 solitary confinement is meant to put you, it's, it's not meant to be, be comfortable. It's meant to be a punishment mm -hmm. because it, it's something that's meant to weigh on someone's mind because it's not natural exactly. for them to be isolated like that. Mm -hmm. And so, 
Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to say as well um, that I have here in my notes, loneliness is marked by a sense of isolation. Mm -hmm. um, that goes back to the solitary confinement part. Um, solitude, on the other hand, is the state of being alone without being lonely, mm -hmm. and it can lead to self-awareness. Mm -hmm. But expound upon that for me a little bit more, because I know when people hear self-awareness, um, this ain't new agey, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But this self-awareness, remember we were discussing mm -hmm. in reference to this, it tends to put a person at a point where I believe, from the perspective that we're coming from, mm -hmm. to begin to really go deep, if you're a believer, to go deeper into the things to know that God is still with them and they're aware of God's presence. Um, if you want to expound upon that. Right. And, and we're, we're talking about under solitude, mm -hmm. correctly. Okay. And how that can lead. Mm -hmm. and, and really, if it's done right, should lead to self-awareness. Now, there's all kinds of people that would say, "Ooh, yes, it would lead to self-awareness." But again, we got, we got, we got, we got, we got to tweak that a little bit so y'all know how we mean that. Right. Okay. Uh, and any other self-awareness outside of this is deception. Exactly. Period. Exactly. The 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 only way to truly be self-aware <laughs> as a human being. As, as someone, as a, a human being in the imago Dei, the, in the image of God, in the image of God, uh, is to know God. Mm -hmm. Because God created you. Exactly. And so no one knows more about the manufactured product than more than the manufacturer. That's right. So in order to get a true, clear understanding of who you are as, a man, as, 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 who, as God's creation, you need to be in touch with the creator. Amen. Now, you try to get that self-awareness anywhere else, you are going to be deceived mm -hmm. because you're getting it from some something that's not of God. That did not create you. That's right. You know, they're not going to be able to tell you everything. They may be able to, and if you are really tapping into something, they may be able to tell you a little something, but mm -hmm. more than likely, they, they, as a matter of fact, even more than likely, they are deceiving you. Right. Right. They are deceiving you. Anything that would lead you away from God is deception. But uh, we get we get into the we get connected with God uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, and we get connected with Him, and we seek Him, and everything like that. We find out everything. We find out ultimately what God wants us to know about us in general. Mm -hmm. Like there's things that are generally true of man mm -hmm. as we open the word and everything like that. But personally, we find out things about what he wants from us individually. Exactly. And a lot of times when you are in solitude, um, I believe that is when God begins to download things into your spirit. That's right. Because you're open to it. Mm -hmm. um, the difference with isolation is the enemy shutting your mind down with uh, deception, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just putting you in a place where you feel like nobody hears, mm -hmm. you know, and it goes back to that solitary confinement. During that solitary confinement, it is to work on the psyche of the mind. So if a person was to take you and put you in a, a place for a month, and you're locked up and rats crawling around, mm -hmm. I don't think sometimes people are going to, you know, their mindset is not going to be, oh, let me go talk to the Lord. It depends on who the person is, but you also got to be mindful. Normally when a person is placed in solitary confinement, there's something that they have done mm -hmm. that has, they stepped out of their character totally Amen. and they're being punished. So if this brings me to some examples. Um, two examples I want to first give. I'm going to give you two examples dealing with isolation with some biblical characters and then two dealing with solitude. You about to say something? I was going to say something. I was, I was even going to ask you, mm -hmm. wouldn't you even say that in a, in a period of, of solitary confinement, in the period of solitary confinement, because really what we're talking about, what we're alluding to, mm -hmm. we want you all to get this when we talk about, we use the solitary confinement analogy. Mm -hmm. We're talking about bondage. Right. We're talking about bondage and how the enemy can use solitude to 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 uh, bind us if we're not mm -hmm. if we allow because we 
we as believers, mm -hmm. you have to allow it. So it has a negative and, effect and a good effect um, as far as what you're talking about with the solitude. Right. But don't yeah. you think, this is the question, mm -hmm. don't you think, because if someone stays in solitary confinement long enough, mm -hmm. since it's not natural, don't you think that it's a strategy of the enemy at a certain point, like in solitary confinement, mm -hmm. at a certain point there's a breaking mm -hmm. that can happen up here, mm -hmm. you know, and right. a person can be messed that's, up. That's the whole point of it, is mm -hmm. to break your mindset. Mm -hmm. um, most of all, to break your spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say something, because I know for those of you who've ever seen uh, the movie Roots, um, there's particular scenes in the movie where when the slaves were bad, Mm -hmm. Or the master felt like they were out of order mm -hmm. or tried to run away. Um, they would put them in this confinement heat box. Mm -hmm. And that heat box would normally be a slave who was stripped naked, sometimes whipped. But they were stripped naked and thrown into this box in like weather that could be 100 degrees. And the box was closed up mm -hmm. with probably just a one little hole, a little bitty hole in there. And when they would get them out... Not only would they be covered in sweat and probably even their blood mingle with the sweat if they were whipped, but their mindset had been like just terrorized. You know, that's a form of isolation in a way, too. If you go back to think about that, that's no different than the uh, solitary confinement. But this solitary confinement was dealing with being in the heat box. You know, I'm quite sure if a person is in prison, they still got room temperatures and stuff. They can't be brutally inhumane, you know, in this day and age. But when you think about stuff like this, I think that it opens the door to a lot of people who might be confused about, you know, when they say, well, God has me doing this, this, this. So I'm spending time with God. And in the same vein, mm -hmm. it's something else behind it. And I'm not saying that all these people are not hearing from God to just kind of be with him mm -hmm. but there is a component to that mm -hmm. that they have to be careful you know I remember talking to a young lady one time before and she told me that she was shutting down because it was about her and God and she needed to hear from God and then in the same breath mm -hmm. she says I'm so alone mm -hmm. and I'm like well um, sis you know if you're with God uh, in solitude it's a state of being alone but you ain't lonely if God is still in the mix of that, then you shouldn't be saying what you're saying. It sounds like some isolation. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And um, it's very, very subtle. And I know uh, some people who are listening to this, if you're dealing with it, reevaluate. Get in the spirit and pray. Pray in tongue. Ask God to reveal it to you. Because sometimes people don't realize that God has to allow certain things to happen in your solitude to get you to where he wants you to be. But when you're in isolation, it can be a great hindrance because now <laughs> some deliverance got to take place because your mind ain't right. I mean, wouldn't you even say this, and I'm just throwing this in here, not trying to take up time mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. If we can use a warfare analogy, mm -hmm. in warfare, it's, it's not safe for a uh, the soldier or, or even some soldiers to be isolated, is it? That's correct. I'm saying this, baby. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find this interesting. I think it was the Korean War. Mm -hmm. uh, you know you know your man. <laughs> uh, studying psychological warfare, brainwashing, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I literally had found out something, I believe it was, baby. Listen to this. About the Korean War. <clears throat> and the government was... The government was concerned when the soldiers came back, some of them that had been, I guess, prisoners of war. Mm -hmm. They came back, mm -hmm. baby, get this. They had been captured. I, you know, we're talking about isolation, right? Mm -hmm. they, had, they came back enemies of America. Makes sense. Everything. Because mm -hmm. what had happened was they had so <laughs> effectively brainwashed mm -hmm. them. And then think about the movie uh, Rambo. Mm -hmm. right. Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to get here to the word, but I'm just saying some examples of certain things. Mm -hmm. You know, it also opens the door when people go through isolation. Mm -hmm. There's another form of PTSD. Some people, especially their military, post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, um, there's a lot that's connected to this. But let me get to the first two examples when it's dealing with isolation. 
Um, the first one I want to talk about, so get your Bibles, everybody. Get your Bibles, okay? It's King David, um, and that's in 1 Samuel 22. 1 Samuel chapter 22, it says, So David left Gath and took refuge in the cave of Adullam. So let me, let me just focus right now on the very first verse. He took refuge in the cave of Adullam. Okay? Now, what I see right here, when they learned of his whereabouts, and you go into verse 2, um, they also had to protect his family. Verse 2 says, in addition, every man who was desperate in debt or discontented rallied around him, and he became their leader. About 400 men were with him. But as we see here, he went into a cave. So let's look at that cave of Adullam as if that was his solitary confinement. Are you guys following me? Okay. And there, of course, was some stuff going on. You know, Saul had paranoia, so he wanted to kill him and all of this. And as we see here, they also had to protect his family. You can read through the story. Um, David wasn't just put in the cave. But as we see here, it tells us that even his brothers and his fathers, they came. They came into the cave to be with him. So he wasn't totally isolated, isolated. But when he went into that cave, that was a form of his isolation, a way to cut off from the world. Because one, he also wanted to protect his life um, and the life of his brothers. As you read on uh, in verse 3, it says, From there, David went to Mazba of Moab, where he said to the king of Moab, Please let my father and mother stay with you until I know what God will do for me. So he left them in the care of the king of Moab, and they stayed with him the whole time David was in the stronghold. The whole time David was in the stronghold, his mother and father was with the king of Moab. Mm -hmm. So once again, for those of you who know this story, which is in 1 Samuel chapter 22, he entered into a place of isolation in the cave. Let's go to the next one. And hopefully you can write this down and go back in your study time and read it. The next one is the prophet Elijah, mm -hmm. um, 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. So the first one was King David, and now we're talking about Elijah, mm -hmm. uh, verses 9 through 18. Make sure you're getting this thing. Okay, so starting with verse 9. We're talking about the prophet Elijah. He entered a cave there and spent the night. He entered a cave there and spent the night. Once again, this is his point of confinement for isolation. And it says, suddenly the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of armies, but the Israelites have abandoned your covenant torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am left alone. I am left alone. Get this now. Mm -hmm. And they are looking for me to take my life. My God. Now, when you go back to King David, uh, David at that time, I should say, David was running into the cave to save his life. Elijah running into the cave to save his life. And he said right here, I'm alone. I'm alone. That's isolation. And let's not forget the backdrop. If mm -hmm. you're not even going here, mm -hmm. and what was the backdrop? What 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 put Elijah in that in that space? The threat of Jezebel. Mm -hmm. So exactly. let the gods do to me, mm -hmm. and more also, if I make not your life like one of them. Mm -hmm. She said something along those lines. Who was them? I believe it was one, it was those prophets that Elijah had had slain, mm -hmm. basically, and so. Off of what he heard that Jezebel had said, uh, pretty much, he fled. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, you guys can read the story for yourself. Um, but I just think it's so amazing when he said, I was left alone. Um, it's just, even in the midst of this, you know, God still was there. I'm not going to say that God can't be with somebody in their isolation. Mm -hmm. If they're receptive to let him in, he's there, you know. 
Um, and these stories are so profound for even our right now. Because sometimes, I'm not going to lie, we all have come to a place where we shut down <laughs> and go in our own little personal caves. We isolate ourselves because, one, we may not want to be bothered with the world. We don't want to be bothered with people. And I've been a great example of that to, to some extent at times. Well, I don't want to be bothered with people, you know, and I was shut down. <clears throat> Even during the time when I attempted suicide in 2004, that was my isolation moment. Little by little by little, it led to that point, you know. And at the end of the day, I have to admit, uh, I was not totally in my word. I was not praying diligently, you know, and those doors end up having some cracks and the enemy came in where I started shutting down on people. No, I don't want to go to church. No, I don't want to talk to you on the phone. No, I don't want to go out to eat with you, you know, and I found myself at a place where eventually, you know, when everything tipped off the table, homegirl was in isolation. And see... You know, even with the, you know, even when we look at uh, uh, Elijah, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of paralleling this a little bit. Um, it wasn't God that led him there. It wasn't God that led him there. Now, again, thankfully, when we we, when we allow ourselves to get in those spaces, God doesn't. I want you to hear me. God doesn't leave us. Exactly. But if we allow ourselves to be submerged and submerged and submerged. If we're not careful, we we, 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 we may need some help mm -hmm. to get out. <laughs> and, a, and a lot of times um, people don't know also or realize mm -hmm. um, your brokenness is your key to your blessing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's when God has to break you to prepare you to bless you. Let's get to that example. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to Jacob. When he wrestled with the angel that is found in Genesis chapter 32, starting with verse 22 through 31. You can read it at your leisure. Verse 22 through 31. 22 says, during the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two slave women, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream along with all his possessions. Verse 24. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him unto daybreak mm -hmm. and that was an angel when when the man saw that he could not defeat him he struck jacob's hip socket and they wrestled and dislocated his hip mm -hmm. then he said to jacob let me go for it is daybreak but jacob said i will not let you go unless you bless me mm -hmm. what is your name the man asked jacob he replied okay the man asked jacob what was his name? And Jacob said, Jacob. That's what he replied. Mm -hmm. Your name will no longer be Jacob, he said. It will be Israel because you have struggled with God and with men mm -hmm. and have prevailed. Mm -hmm. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he answered, why do you ask my name? And he blessed him there. Mm -hmm. Jacob then named the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, mm -hmm. he said, yet my life has been spared. Mm -hmm. The sun shone on him as he passed by Peniel, limping because of his hip. Mm -hmm. So his brokenness was the key to his blessing. But if you realize he wasn't in isolation, it was that solitude time that when he realized that angel was there, he grabbed the hold to him. And I believe what we're what we're even aiming at here. Um, this is not someone that will, willfully broke away from healthy community. Mm -hmm. uh, with Elijah, for instance, I'm gonna tie this together. With Elijah, Elijah uh, allowed Jezebel's voice to intimidate, or his or his or her uh, threatenings to intimidate him. Mm -hmm. And Elijah, even within his, uh, you could say, even within his. Uh, uh, fear or whatever, Elijah was deceived because mm -hmm. he said, I alone am left. And we find out later on that God, you know, God showed him. He said, look, I got thousands. I forgot how many, y'all, so please forgive me. He said, I have thousands that have not bowed the knee to Jezebel. Now, see, a lot of times what happened is when people do uh, find themselves getting and isolating, from, specifically isolating from the body. Mm-hmm. They, they develop 
they kind of develop if they're not careful this Elijah complex and I hate to use Elijah because Elijah didn't stay in that but they develop this Elijah complex that says you know you know ain't nobody right mm -hmm. but me mm -hmm. ain't nobody living this thing but me you know you know I, you know I can do it I can do this all by myself and uh, that's not the way God intended for us to do it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and think about it, those that are listening, it may not sound exactly like that, but if you really examine some of the, some of the thinking of people that get into this mindset, it, they, they pretty much do have this kind of mindset. Ain't nobody right but me. Mm -hmm. Now, with Jacob, Jacob was living his life. And God uh, allowed him to come into a place where, at a certain point in his life, God wanted him to be alone mm -hmm. because God wanted to deal with him. Exactly. And when God dealt with him, you know, he experienced, uh, if you look into this, he really experienced a theophany where he had an experience with God. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a, 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 a manifestation or really a, a someone's really saying Christophany. Mm -hmm. Where God appeared uh, to to uh, uh, Jacob, and when Christ appeared to to Jacob, uh, he had this life changing experience. And I say Christophany because when we see when we see God appearing as a man, you know, the person that they're seeing is Jesus. You know, the person that's who that's who. That's a whole nother study, but hopefully, hopefully everybody hears what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but he had this ex life changing experience with God, and that was birthed in 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 solitude. He even had the self awareness that you were talking about mm -hmm. because God showed him, God showed him, this was your name exactly, but this is your name now. Mm -hmm. So, yep. And the last one I want to talk about is, uh, of course, Moses. Um, Exodus chapter 19, mm. Exodus 19, um, and the particular scripture I'm going to go to is verse 2. Mm. They traveled from Rephidim, mm. came to the Sinai wilderness, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Moses went up the mountain to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain. This is what you must say to the house of Jacob and explain to the Israelites. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will carefully listen to me and keep my covenant, you will be my possession out of all the peoples, although the whole earth is mine. And you will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. These are the words that are said that you are to say to the Israelites. So once again, in this situation... Moses went to the mountain. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to say about that before we do close up. When Moses went to the mountain, um, I believe, of course, we know he had that experience with the Lord through the burning bush. He talked to him. Mm -hmm. I also, and I want some people to think about this. It's also in your solitude time, I believe, when the Lord really can minister to you. Mm -hmm. If your heart and your mind is in the right place with him to do so. Mm -hmm. And... I say that because of this reason. Mm -hmm. I remember asking someone, what do you really think <clears throat> went on for those 40 days and 40 nights when Moses was on Mount Sinai? When he went up to that mountain and he spent that time with God, mm -hmm. that solitude time, just him and the Lord. Mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. that the Lord had to minister to his spirit. Let me tell you why. What had already happened? What had just happened? He was used as a leader to walk the Hebrew children through the Red Sea. Red sea. Now watch this. Not only did he uh, was he used by God to do that, mm -hmm. but uh, when those waters closed up, them Egyptians, some of them Egyptians, a majority, all of them, they were folk he knew. Mm -hmm. There were people that he was in the Egyptian palace with, probably playing games, talking to him, eating, mm -hmm. whatever, fighting. He knew these Egyptians as if they were family. Mm -hmm. So I believe in one vein, he sees it okay. The Lord used me as the deliverer mm -hmm. to walk his people through and deliver them out of bondage. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, 
Now he's in a bondage in his mind like, Lord, I just watched everybody I grown up with die. Mm -hmm. To save the people, I'm connected to the bloodline, but Ruby don't know. And, you know, I feel like during that time, the Lord had to become his, uh, his therapist, his psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. Even though he didn't have no recliner, no lazy boy to lay on, as he was talking, he had nothing but the ground up there taking off the sandals because he was on holy ground. But the point is, there was a whole lot, I believe, took place. Mm -hmm. And that solitude brought so much that I think even somewhere in Exodus 34, um, they talk about when he came back down from the mountain, his face was glowing. And this is the other part I want to say about solitude. Mm -hmm. When you spend time with your father, you begin to take on his characteristics. You begin to have a glow. You begin to have this light because people are like, whoa. You ever been around some folks and you be like, I know he spends time with God. I know she spends time with God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a false light. It's not falsity, you know, but it's so authentic. You can feel it. You can feel that it's just like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't get that in isolation. Mm -hmm. But if you're spending time with God in solitude, as you say, you should be coming back heavy. When I say heavy, you're a glory carrier. So you can carry so much glory that now you're ready to release it because you took that solitude in your time to spend time with God as he poured into you his downloads. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I, I know certain things I'm seeing in the body of Christ um, that is not what people say it is. And I just pray that their discernment to understand what it is is what it is. If you're saying it's this and it's something else, it ain't. You know, um, just be mindful. You know, always pray unto the Lord and ask God, what is this? Mm -hmm. You know, but um, I thought that was a perfect example, you know, with Moses being on Mount Sinai, having that encounter with the Lord, just as Jacob did with the angel of God. And there's so much that you can get from that to know that God will show up when you're in his presence in that time that you're, you're grasping, like, God, I'm like a deer panting for water. Mm -hmm. I need your presence. And, you know, you made me think, baby, you said something, and God is good, because you made me think, you know what, maybe the next time we come, we need to talk about design. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I felt that so strong. Mm -hmm. Talk about that last part. So, y'all, y'all be on the lookout. God willing. And by the way, discernment is a never-ending topic to me. Mm -hmm. Discernment is in this message. Mm -hmm. Discernment was in the last message that we talked about. You it really, know? really is, baby. Yeah, it's never-ending. It really you know, um, mm -hmm. I, I look at discernment as it's a necessity. I mean, period. Because we're not. I'm not trying to get into the to the next message, but I'll say this. One thing that'll help people, because they hear that word discernment, like a lot of other King James English, and they get caught up with the fanciness of the word and they don't think about the meaning of the word if they're not careful. But another word for discernment means to distinguish. Mm -hmm. You know, that means you're able to tell, to, do, to, to be able to tell difference, to be able to recognize difference. That's what discernment deals with. Yep. And, um, you know, everything that people are saying is God, even in what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. Oh, God just has me in this season where it's just me and him. When was the last time you went to church, uh, brother or sister? Oh, I haven't been in two months. That's not God. Now, you can get mad at me all you want to. You can get mad at me. You can get mad at me all you want to. Mm -hmm. God is not going to call you away from fellowship. It's true. He's not going to do that. That's not God. And that's a trick of the enemy mm -hmm. that's playing on your yeah, mind. You know. you know, and it's it's crazy because I discern it with certain people mm -hmm. to the point where I think that spirit in them gets offended mm -hmm. because they don't want it to be called out. Mm -hmm. But I'm calling it out today in this message. For those of you, you know who you are. Mm -hmm. Let that thing go. Amen. Amen. I'm not telling you something I don't read in a book. I'm telling you what I know. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm somebody who dealt with it. That's right, man. At the end of the day, you can't hide from God. And especially if God show uh, a person, especially his prophets, if he show a person where you at, mm -hmm. and he shows us, we prophesy and we see in parts, mm -hmm. I have seen certain things over certain people mm -hmm. that I and you all know who you are. Mm -hmm. Come out of that. That's foolery. Amen. Amen. Because it's only going to lead you to one or two places. 
It's going to lead you away from God's people or the grave. Mm -hmm. And either way it goes, you're still going to be away from God's people if you did mm -hmm. before your time. Now, now, one thing, one thing Elder Reinhardt isn't bound by. I'm not bound by religious formalism and stuff like that. Now, the Bible talks about pure religion, so all religion is not bad. But I'm not bound by a lot of that, so I, I, I get it. There are home uh, home fellowships. I understand there are movements that happen down through history within the body of Christ. So Elder Reinhardt ain't condemning that. Nope, 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 nope. Not condemning it. I'm condemning these lone wolves. That's what I'm condemning. I'm not even condemning them. I'm condemning their actions. Come out of that. I'm, the lone wolf thing is not of God. Oh, I'm just I'm just out here. And you, you don't do you fellowship anywhere? Uh, I don't need. To. I'm the church. I'm the church. I'm the church. That ain't Bible. That ain't Bible. You know, nowhere in the Bible is someone individually the church. We collectively are the ecclesia. Mm -hmm. We collectively are the called out. And uh, we're about to close this down. I just wanted to read one thing. Because I want, I want to share something with you. Uh, Apostle Paul said this in the book of Romans, one of my favorite uh, books, uh, one of my favorite epistles from Paul. Uh, Romans chapter 1, starting at verse, let's start at verse 11. For I want very much to see you. Uh, I have the HCSB, she has a CSB. I think the CSB is a little bit better, but... Nevertheless, until I get my CSB. <laughs> uh, for I want very much to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. So he's talking about coming to visit uh, the church at Rome to strengthen them, etc. That is to be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Mm -hmm. Both yours and mine. Mine? You talking about yourself, Apostle Paul? The great anointed Apostle Paul? Yes. Yes. I want to come to you at the Church of Rome because you at the Church of Rome will help encourage me, mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul. Yep. Why? Because in the body of Christ, in the Ecclesia, we need each, each other. other. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to leave you all with that. We wanted to leave you all with that. Amen. Uh, we love you. And uh, we've enjoyed sharing this time with you. We have. And, uh, and I want to I want to say this real quick. What he just said, you know, in reference to um, we need each other. Uh, he'll tell you. I, <laughs> I was at a point in the season of my life where I'm like, I don't need the fellowship with some of these ants who say they saints. Mm -hmm. And I would say that because... I know how I felt around some of them sometimes. I'm like, I could just be a bad fat Baptist instead of dealing with the shenanigans and the soul train entertainment in church. Mm -hmm. You know, and I felt like that because sometimes, you know, people when they go to church, they don't want to feel worse than what they did before they came. Mm -hmm. But I sometimes would because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm irritated, I'm frustrated, and then the enemy plays this game on your mind. You don't need to be there. They're getting under your skin. Mm -hmm. You do better just being alone. You know, and things like that is dangerous. You know, and then when he kept saying, hey, the Bible say fail not to assemble, <laughs> you know, to fellowship with the assembly. I'm like, oh, you know, but that's the word. That wasn't Julius. That was the word. And the more I would hear him say that, the more my heart would get convicted because it's the word of God. And to go against the word is rebellion, you know. So to God be the glory, um, I pray that. Each of you were blessed by what we said today and um, continue to trust God and always be in prayer to know the difference between isolation and solitude. Praise God. God bless. God bless you all. Love you all.